Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Arduino Opta PLC Structured Text ST. Structured Text ST programming is a programming language that is part of the IEC standard and is used in the Arduino Opta PLC. This programming language allows you to write code in a structured and organized manner, making it easier to understand and maintain. With Structured Text programming, you can create complex and sophisticated programs by combining statements, functions, and variables. Artificial Intelligence AI can be easily used with Structured Text ST. We will demonstrate how to use AI to get a sample program for quick modifications in your application. The Opta PLC provides high flexibility and control of your applications. The Arduino Opta PLC supports Structured Text Programming as one of the five programming languages in the IEC standard and Arduino C++. This allows you to choose the programming language best su suited your needs and preferences. Arduino C++ is a widely used programming language in the Arduino community and offers a vast library of functions and resources. Whether you, you program in structured text, Arduino C++, or any other language, the Arduino Opta PLC provides a powerful platform for developing automation and control applications. Its versatility and compatibility with different programming languages make it popular among developers and engineers. In the following sections, we will explore how to start a new project in the Arduino Opta PLC and how to map the physical I.O. in your PLC. These steps are essential for setting up the foundation of your project and ensuring proper communication between the PLC and external devices. Detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Start a new project. Our project will create a start-stop circuit with two lighted push-button switches using Structured Text ST programming. When the green LED push-button is selected, the green LED light will turn on. This will remain on until the red LED push-button is selected. When the green LED is on and the red LED is off and vice versa. The CPU green LED will be on if the Arduino Opta PLC is executing its program. Open your computer's Arduino PLC Integrated Development Environment IDE software. Start a new project by selecting New Project on the main software screen. A second method of starting a new project is to select New Project from the main menu file. The third method is to choose the icon for the new project. The new project window will now be displayed. Enter the name of the project in the dialog box. This will be the name of the project stored on your drive. We will leave the default directory as it is. Ensure that the Opto 1.0 PLC is selected for the target. Select OK. This will now create and save your program file for the Opto PLC. Mapping Physical I.O. in the Opta PLC The Opta has physical inputs and outputs we must map before using them in our project. In the Workspace window, select the Resources tab at the bottom. Under Local I.O. Mapping, you will see all of the physical inputs and outputs on this controller. Select Programmable Inputs. The Programmable Input Mapping will be displayed. We can assign a variable to each input we intend to use in our Structured Text program. Under I.O. Type, we can select Digital, Default, or Analog. The Analog Resolution can also be selected for the inputs. Select Relay Outputs that display the Relay Output Mapping. We can then once again assign a variable to the relays that we will use in our Structured Text program. Select LED Outputs which displays the LED Output Mapping. These are the status lights on the Opta CPU unit. We will make these represent the relays in our program. Assign a variable name to the LED output that we will use. The Opta PLC also has a front LED that can be different colors. We will assign the green output to indicate that the Opta PLC code is scanning. Now that all of our mapping is complete, we can save the program using the icon on the main page. We can also save the program using the main menu, File, Save Program. Wiring the inputs and outputs. 
We can now physically wire the two lighted push button switches to the inputs and the LEDs of the switches to the outputs. Here is the wiring diagram of the Arduino Opta PLC. The positive 24 volt DC signal is wired to one side of the green normally open contact switch. It is also wired to one side of the red normally closed switch contact. The other side of the switches are wired to input 1 and 2 respectively. The positive 24 volt DC signal is wired to one side of the switch lamps. Relay outputs are provided on the Arduino Opta PLC. The other side of the switch LED lights are wired to one side of the relay for each switch. Green will be the output one and red will be output two. The other side of the relay output contacts of the PLC will be wired to the zero volt DC signal. This completes the wiring of the PLC. Tasks in the Opta PLC. To access the tasks in your project, navigate to the Project tab and locate the Tasks folder. You will see the list of IOs we have just mapped for this project. Expand the folder by clicking on the plus sign next to it. The tasks are categorized into Fast, Slow, Background, and INIT. To configure these tasks, right-click on any of the four task folders and select Task Configuration. Your task will be executed within the designated task folder. The fast task folder will execute your program cyclically every 10 milliseconds or 100 times per second. This can be changed by changing the set period to yes. You can then enter a value in the period column in milliseconds. The majority of programs will be placed in this folder. The slow and background task folders will also be scanned cyclically. They are both set at a fixed period of 100 and 500 milliseconds. 10 times per second and 2 times per second. These tasks are ideal for functions like math, equations, etc. The INIT or initialized task folder sets variables or conditions in the PLC after it powers up. It will run for a single scan. Select OK to close the task configuration window. Starting a new structured text program. Select project. New Object, New Program from the main menu to start a new program. You can also do this by right-clicking on the project name and selecting the new program under the Add heading. The new program window will be displayed. We will use structured text ST in our example. Select ST. Name and assign the new structured text program to the Fast Task folder. The program name cannot have spaces. Select OK. Our new structured text program will now be displayed in our work area. This program also appears on the Fast Task folder and the project as a structured text symbol. In the Help menu, you'll find all the operators and their parameters that can be used for the structured text programming. Save your Opta PLC program. Programming our structured text ST. Structured text XT is a high-level programming language widely used in programmable logic controllers or PLCs. This is a text-based language used to write programs for industrial control systems. One of the advantages of ST is that it is easy to learn and understand, making a popular choice for many engineers and developers. Generative Artificial Intelligence, or AI, 
can be used to create sample programs using ST. This is because ST is a structured language that follows a set of rules and guidelines making it an ideal candidate for machine learning algorithms. ChatGPT is a powerful AI tool that can be used to generate code in ST for a start-stop circuit. We can ask ChatGPT write a structured text PLC program for the start-stop circuit. It will provide an answer that we can now copy that answer and place it into our actual code in our controller. The response can also give us an understanding of how structured text ST works. As our ST program, we will copy this directly into the Arduino PLC IDE software. We can now modify the program in our application. Our input and output variables already have been defined. There is a local variable window to define the motor running. We can now modify the code for our conditions to start the motor, green output. We can now modify the code for the conditions to stop the motor. The stop button is wired normally closed and C, so we will modify this condition. The CPU LED green light can now be added to our program. ST programming must account for all variables. We will now add an INIT program to initialize the variables. You will see that since the outputs are not set until the input signals and internal bit match, this must be set upon powering up the PLC. Our initial startup of the PLC will turn the red output and red LED output on and the green output and the green LED output off. Save the program by using the icon on the main menu or selecting Save Program from the main menu file. Download the ST program to the Opta PLC. Select Setup Communication from Main Menu Online. In the Device Link Manager window, select Modbus TCP and then select Activate. Select Properties. We can now enter the IP address we established in the following post, programming the Arduino Opta PLC Ethernet port. Our communication method with the Opta PLC is now set. Select the Connect button. You will now see that our computer is connected to the Opta PLC controller. Select the download icon on the main menu. Since we didn't compile the project first, the PLC IDE prompts us before downloading. Select yes. The output window will now display the status of our download operation. When this has finished, the bottom right side of the software will show you that the PLC IDE and the controller programs are the same. Monitoring the ST logic and variables. Select the live debug mode on the main screen. This will show you the status of our inputs and outputs on the ST or structured text. Select the watch window on the main menu. This will display the watch window. We can enter and select the variable or tags we want to monitor. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.